Good morning. I'm Jonathan Coppell, Dean of the Watts College of Public Service and Community Solutions. But today, for Sun Devil Giving Day, you can call me Chef Coppell because we'll be cooking up community solutions this morning. Uh, we decided to do something a little different uh, to celebrate Sun Devil Giving Day, and I'll be making pancakes. Hopefully, you'll be making pancakes at home along with me. Uh, a bit of explanation maybe is required why I'm standing here uh, about to cook with you. So it was only a year ago, it seems like a million years ago, it was only a year ago that we were planning to do a big pancake breakfast downtown. Uh, we were going to cook pancakes, have everybody come together. It would, be a, it would be a fun Watts College gathering. As you know, uh, events intervened, and we don't do gatherings anymore. Uh, and unfortunately, we lost our first pancake breakfast to COVID-19. But, but not before the Crack Watts College team ordered a hat that said Dean Coppell on it. And so the entire driving motive of this event today was to make use of this hat that says Dean Coppell on it. So there you have it, the first cooking up community solutions uh, based on the need to use a customized chef hat. Now, as I said, the reason for this gathering is to celebrate Sun Devil Giving Day and to encourage you to participate uh, in the support of our students. So in true telethon fashion, I'm gonna give you a web address. It's a little long, so you might wanna, you might wanna get out a pen for this one, but it's givingday.asu.edu slash Watts College. And what we're doing here is trying to raise money for the funds that support our students. And, and while I'm cooking pancakes, I'll talk to you a little bit about what these funds do, but it's been absolutely critical that we have our emergency funds to support Watts College students. Never has that been more true than this year when the stresses of COVID-19 and the dislocation that's come with the shutting down of businesses and people losing their jobs and lives being upended has made it absolutely essential that we have the resources to make sure that our students can succeed, that they can go out and be the solution in our communities. So enough about that. I'm gonna try and go back and forth between Watts College goodness and pancake goodness, uh, but you can see that we're here to make pancakes. So the first thing is to make sure that you are properly equipped. So we've got all of our stuff here. We've got measuring cups, we've got our spoons, we've got our mixing bowls, we've got a griddle ready to go. We've got the ingredients. I'll run through those for a second. I will tell you, for those of you who are wondering, you will not need a very sharp knife. And I'll tell you that the very sharp knife can be a dangerous thing. I once, I once was making a chicken dish and I cut myself like the dickens. It was calling us. It's so embarrassing. And I'll never live it down because all you have to do is look on the internet and you can see when I cut myself with a very sharp knife. Don't cut yourself with a very sharp knife. But if you do, save the liver because the liver is a natural coagulant to stop the bleeding. The very sharp knife today because we're just making pancakes. This is doing something funny, I don't know. Anyway, I'm not gonna do the show in this place the whole time, even though I think it would be memorable. All right, I don't know who that guy was, but let's start making, let's start making pancakes. So what you're gonna need is your flour, your sugar, your baking powder, salt, and baking soda. And then you're gonna have your wet ingredients, which is gonna be milk, melted butter, an egg, and a little bit of vanilla extract. And then of course, the things that you like to mix in for your own personal preferences. Now there's two different philosophies on making pancakes. Do you mix the dry and wet together or mix them separately and then bring them together? This is a heated debate in pancake making circles. I have found better results by mixing the dry first 
and then adding in the wet. And so that is the approach that I will follow, but this is a no judgment zone. So if you choose, if you choose to mix them all together at once, nobody will think any less of you. Everybody good with that? Yes, okay. So uh, here we go with the ingredients. Now there's a, there's a metaphor to be made here about the ingredients. So what are we gonna start with? Two cups of flour. So the metaphor to, 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 to think about here is we make community solutions. That's what we think Watts College is about. And we're not, we're, not, uh, we're not arrogant about this. We don't think that we have all the answers and we don't think that we make community solutions by ourselves. Um, it only works because we have incredible faculty who come up with ideas and are drawing upon the research to innovate about how we might solve problems. We have incredible students who want to learn and learn by doing. Uh, we have an incredible staff that supports all those activities. And perhaps most importantly, we have incredible community partners, uh, whether you're talking about nonprofits, government agencies, uh, civic organizations, everything that we do is collaborative. And so it's sort of like a recipe. You need to have all of those different things together in order to make the community solutions that we do, whether you're talking about human trafficking or domestic violence or homelessness or anything, it's always a combined effort. So I've got the, I've got the two cups of flour. Now we need a quarter cup of sugar. All right, quarter cup. All right, we have a quarter cup. Here's the sugar. Well, that was a little bit of a mess. That's all right. Okay. Cooking should be messy. People think that it's bad if it's messy. That actually means that it's working. Four teaspoons of baking powder. All right, let's see the teaspoons here. Uh, I always get baking powder and baking soda mixed up, but this is the baking powder. I'm not being super precise. So I'm, I, I think there's an embarrassing thing to know. So the staff of Watts College has so much confidence in my pancake cooking ability that on the side of the room, there's a box of donuts. That's the first thing I saw when I walked in was a box of donuts, which I, I gotta tell you, I take personally. They're like, they're like, look, we're, we're, we'll be there, but like, we're not gonna, we're not gonna eat it. Like that one, like, we didn't sign up for that. All right, so there's your baking powder, and it says a half a teaspoon of salt. Uh, a half a teaspoon of salt. Yeah, this is an old, old family recipe for my, uh, my, um, my great grandmother used to make these pancakes back in the shtetl. All right. Here we go. Uh, what did I say? A half teaspoon of salt. Okay, you got that. And then the baking soda is a quarter teaspoon. We even have a little, oh, look at the baby little quarter teaspoon. So cute. So cute. All right, here we go. Quarter teaspoon of baking soda. All right, so as I said, the way I like to do it when I cook pancakes is to mix up the, um, to mix up the dry stuff first. So you get all those things evenly distributed. I think that's the way to do it. And then to turn to the, uh, then to turn to the wet ingredients. Uh, so we've already got the melted butter in here. I was gonna say, I was gonna use that. Oh, there is a measuring cup separate from that. That's good. All right, here we go. Um, I can't see the markings on this. This is a somewhat questionable measuring cup. <laughs> I really can't. Uh, one and three quarters. Here we go. Well, I'm going to guesstimate. That looks. Uh, uh, one. That's no. That's definitely. That's definitely not one. This is the hardest measuring cup to read in the world. That's one. All right. I'm gonna call that good enough. They say good enough for government work. So it's a funny thing since we're the College of Public Service. I have been told 
that that phrase good enough for government work, which is now basically an insult, right? Like, oh, it's good enough for government work. Supposedly, that was once a compliment. I don't know if I believe that. That that, that was like, oh, it's good enough for government work. Like, A plus, I, I cry BS on that. Um, but that has been alleged to me. Uh, anyway, all right, so I did the milk. What, what was after the milk? An egg. See if I can do this. I used to be able to do this in one handed. I can still do it. Thank you. Thank you. Kids, don't try that at home because it requires, uh, it requires years of training. Uh, all right, so egg. Now, uh, vanilla extract. This is a personal preference. We'll put a little bit in. I'm not sure I would do it if I were my own recipe, but it's not bad. Um, and no, I've not actually consumed any of the vanilla extract this morning, in case you're wondering. There, there might have been there might have been some concerns about that. I could, I can understand why that might be something that you thought had happened. All right, so, so now we've got the uh, we've got the wet ingredients. I'm going to mix them up. All right, here we go. So, as I said, right, the you know, if we if we were to take our if we were to take our metaphor. Far too, uh, far too long, and we said, look, the college works because you've got all these ingredients. Um, obviously, simply having the ingredients isn't good enough. You then have to, you then have to put them together in a way that works. And we take a lot of pride on figuring out how to work together as a community. You know, we call it the Watts College of Public service and community solutions, and that really is that really is indicative not just of our name but of our philosophy, and and we've learned a ton over the years about how to be good partners um, to all of those who contribute to the recipe. And so, as as we gather on Sun Devil Giving Day, I think it's really important to express to express thanks. Uh, to be grateful. Um, we're asking people to give, but we're enormously appreciative of the people who have given. Uh, first of all, who have given in terms of their participation in our programs, um, but quite frankly, given financially, um, because the financial contributions have made, uh, have made an enormous difference. Um, there's a big fly. Um, <laughs> So they've made an enormous difference in terms of the in terms of the our ability to be successful. Um, so as I said as I said at the at the outset, our emphasis today on Sun Devil Giving Day is to raise money for our impact funds. I did not do enough in the milk front. See, this is this is my cooking philosophy, which is to not overemphasize the precision in the measurement of the ingredients, but rather to cook by your eyes, not by what the measuring cup tells you. And that was just looking a little gooey. Um, so, so as I said, we're trying to raise money for the, the Dean's Impact uh, Fund and, and particularly with an emphasis on emergency support for students. And, you know, that's, that's an abstraction. Um, when when you say it that way, uh, you know it just sounds it sounds like something that uh, that uh, that is a good thing, but it's it's kind of cold. A lot of our students are in challenging positions to complete their education to begin with. I mean, we are extremely proud of our of our of our students. We are a majority minority college. Uh, over sixty percent of our students are from Pell eligible families. That means. Uh, family incomes of, uh, of a, less than $60,000 a year. Uh, majority are first generation students. We've got incredible diversity, not just in racial and ethnic terms, but life experience. We've got lots of returning students and veteran students and transfer students. It's fantastic, um, but, uh, but a complicated, right? Uh, and people are juggling taking care of kids and taking care of parents and working full-time jobs and they're trying to do all these things. And the problem is that when one little thing one little thing uh, 
knocks you a little bit off course, it can interrupt your education and it can, it can cause real problems. And so the example of what has happened over the last year uh, is quite striking. So, so I think about the stories that some of our students have allowed us to share. Uh, for example, one undergraduate, Lisa, uh, you know, she was in a she was in a tough position. Um, she lost she lost her housing. She had to, by necessity, move into a situation that was really bad, um, and she was sort of stuck there. She turned to the college for help because we had the resources through donors like you. We were able to lend a helping hand, get her into a better situation, and luckily, because of that, her education's not interrupted. Uh, in the same way. And so I think of stories like that when we talk about fundraising, because it's not about a check, it's about a student who's now going to earn a degree from Watts College who otherwise might not have. That's what that's what this is really that's what this is really about. Okay, so I've got I've got the batter going pretty good here. Um, I've got, you know, you got you got to give it some time. You don't want to rush this. Uh, because if you if you don't give it time, you'll get those little flowery lumps in there, and they actually don't taste too good. It turns out when you eat them. So, so we say we say uh, we say that in the community work that we do, you have to move at the speed of trust. Uh, that's what we've talked about in our Maryvale One Square Mile project. That you have to you have to move at the speed of trust. You have to make pancakes at the speed of trust too. It turns out. That's my profound thought for the. That's my profound thought for the moment. Okay, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna start making some pancakes. I don't have. I must say I don't have the proper equipment to do what I did when I was making pancakes for my kids, which was to write everybody's name. So Tori, I'm sorry, I'm not gonna be able to write your name in a pancake. I will try. Uh, is there anybody who has a simpler name, like the letter O? Like that could be good. Who's here whose name is the letter O? Uh, we'll work on that. I might be able to do a first letter though. Here, I don't, uh, Tori, I feel bad now. So I'm gonna make you a nice pancake. Yeah. So there's, there's a, it's a, whoops. It's, it's more of like a division sign. All right. Who else wants, Matt, do you want a customized pancake? Yeah, all right, Matt's gonna get a pancake. Well, there is it. All right. It's not, I don't know. I didn't have enough for a full M, Matt. You're just going to be a part of an M. All right. So I think pancakes are good, plain, fine, but they're really better when you put some berries and stuff in. Tori, your tea is, is not looking good, I got to tell you. You're going to have to use your... You're gonna, it's gonna taste good. No, it's gonna taste good, but you're gonna have to use your imagination to imagine that it's a that it's it's special for you. All right, so you got blueberries. What else do we have here? We have raspberries, so we're gonna put some raspberries in there. All right. The thing that the thing that's so uh, that's so remarkable about giving to giving to support students. You know, we we raise we raise a lot of funds. It's really quite humbling uh, the the investment that people make in Watts College. I'm going to make this a little hotter. Sorry, I wasn't paying attention to that. I like the griddle to be really hot. I put it up. I put it up usually at the max because um, I think that they come out better when it's super hot. And I will tell you that when you make it hotter in the middle of cooking the pancakes, what you usually get is a big, nasty mess. So keep that in mind when I try to flip these pancakes that that was suboptimal, but not but but on purpose because I wanted to show you what not to do. So what you don't want to do is heat up the griddle more in the middle. Ah, that is a nasty fly. Those of you who are familiar with this building will understand. We're at the Westward Ho. I can tell you a little bit about that. But having a big nasty fly here is not pleasing. Um, anyway, what I was going to say was the thing about the thing about investments in Watts College students is that 
you can think of it as helping one student. You can think of it as helping one student succeed. And so she'll graduate now and she might not have graduated. Now that's an enormously important thing. That's gonna change the life of that student. It'll change the life of the family of that student. I've seen so many stories where the one student is the first in their family to go to college, but after that one person goes to college, it sort of changes the whole trajectory of their whole family. Now, all of their younger siblings go to college and all of their children go to college. It's, it's a remarkable thing. I mean, all you have to do is watch the movie Rudy and it's the same story there. So, you know, that proves it's true. But, but, but it's, it's even more than that because the, the thing that's quite special about investing in Watts College students is that they then go out and do remarkable things, right? Whether they're you know, working in law enforcement or they're a social worker or they end up working for a nonprofit or running a nonprofit, they do incredible, incredible things. And so an investment in a Watts College student is more than just an investment in a single student, it's an investment in the whole community. It's like this incredible multiplier effect of the, of the ingredient. I don't have a way to tie that to the pancake, but it's like, imagine if I cook this one pancake, I'm gonna see if it's ready to flip. It's like, imagine if I cook this one pancake and somehow it turned into 10. Like that's what it means to give, that's what it means to give to walk out. See that happened was it didn't, it didn't cohere properly because it wasn't hot enough. So I'm gonna have to do a little bit of pancake surgery here. Oh dear, the pancake is broken. I knew that might happen. But don't worry, it's okay. It don't look pretty, but after all, it's all gonna not look pretty in the end anyway. Oh, I made a joke. What? <clears throat> Sorry, I was kind of between voices there. Um, so yeah, so these are like, these are like when you give to Watts College, it's like you're cooking somehow magic pancakes. See, this is the problem with these giant personalized pancakes. Like they're super hard to flip. Are right, you ready? Like if you're not flipping the pancakes dramatically, you're not making pancakes. All right. That was ready. See, it just takes a little practice and you made four pancakes. Tell your pancake is, it's a deconstructed pancake. That's what all the chefs are doing these days, the deconstructed things. That's what we've done. You have to adapt as you get older, things change. All right, um, I'll just make a good, why don't we have some, just some nice traditional pancakes for a while. You can do that too. So yeah, as I, as I, as I, th as I reflect upon it, um, one of the one of the greatest sources of pride I have is meeting. I meet people all the time who are graduates of of Watts College, and they they not only are they not only are doing great things. Um, and I think of people, you know, like we've got a lot of our elected officials. A lot of people know that uh, Kirsten Cinema uh, is a is a is a multiple time graduate and instructor for Watts College. And I was on a, I was on a, a Zoom uh, call for our uh, Arizona Governance and Policy Academy, which is a, a sort of educational program we run for members of the legislature. Uh, and Rebecca Rios, who's uh, the minority leader in the Senate, she's a social work graduate as well. And she takes great pride in telling people she's a graduate from Watts College. A couple of years ago, we had a great uh, Watts College convocation where uh, Katie Hobbs, our Secretary of State, and Kimberly Yee, our treasurer, different parties, but united by being Watts College grads, came together and they talked about the value of public service and what it means in Watts College. And I, I meet people, city managers, I say, say, people doing all kinds of great work in our community. I meet them all the time. And they say, you know, I went to, I went to Watts College or I went to the School of Public Affairs or I went to the School of Social Work and it was a hugely important part of my, uh, part of my life. I'm gonna try some strawberry ones just to, for variety's sake. Um, and so who are the future, who are the future public servants that will be helped by your contribution on Sun Devil Giving Day? Oh, the blueberries are cooking, which smells really good. I don't know if you smell that. 
That is the best part. All right. Um, who, who and, and what will they do to make our communities stronger? So, okay, so we're gonna just pretend that this blueberry one worked a little better than it did. It's the first one. The first one is, you know, the first one is, doesn't really count. Everybody knows that. So, so you can look at that, but I'm putting it away. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna toss it. I was gonna say, I'm not gonna 86 it. How many of you have worked in a restaurant? I uh, got some hands. That's restaurant talk. That was, that was genuine restaurant talk. 86, the blueberry pancake. I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna set it aside for somebody who's really desperate. Okay. But, but I'm gonna, oops, it's, that's pretty fragile actually. All right, here we go. We're gonna get the M pancake out. All right, look at that. That, that one came out pretty good. Now, I, I'm, I have a hard time with this because I'm not criticizing, but this is some nasty log cabin. Who's up for fructose? Um, I'm not gonna put that on there, but it's a nice prop. Um, we've got whipped cream. Now that's equally nasty, but everybody likes this stuff. I'm not, I know you're wanting me to do this, right? I'm not gonna do that. No, I'm not gonna do that. But I'm gonna make a pretty outline. All right, Matt, you gotta come, Matt. Look at, I made them wear these out, look, you gotta see. I, I made them wear these outfits. He's my chef assistant. That's pretty good, right? See, hold on a second. Take a bite. You got to take a bite on camera. <laughs> see, there you go. See, I, I can make I can make other stuff too, you know, and not just making pancakes. I am a very flexible, creative chef. Now, the funny thing is. And people know this, like I'm on this keto thing. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna eat these. And and the, the idea was put to me like, well, why don't you make keto pancakes? And I I rejected that because I'm like, people don't want to eat nasty almond flour, no, coconut powder pancakes, because like no good. So just trust me on this. Keto pancakes are okay if you need something desperately, but uh, I think you might want to just take the carbs and say it's going to be a carb day. All right. Are you guys, does anybody else want pancakes? Who else wants pancakes? All right, here we go. Tori, you want, you want your tea? Yeah. Your deconstructed tea? Do you want some whipped cream on it? Yes, please. Okay, here we go. See, the good news is, it doesn't look so good now, does it? No. Okay, but. Next level. Check Thank that you. out. Beautiful. Big improvement. <laughs> See, there's nothing, there's nothing that a nice coating of whipped cream can't fix. Linda, are you gonna have a pancake? All right, here we go. Anyway, all right, well. I gave the web address, right? I'm gonna, I'm gonna encourage you one more time to, uh, to take a few minutes to support Sun Devil, support Sun Devil Giving Day with your contribution to Watts College. The address is, is uh, where'd it go? Oh, there it is, givingday.asu.edu. I, by the way, I was, I, and then you do slash Watts College. For those of you, I, I, I like to date myself by making TV references that only people might get. I was looking at the cue cards and I was gonna say, Tony, where are my cue cards? Letterman, Letterman fans out there. Anyway. 
it's really good. It's really good to have an audience of people who work for you because they all pretend that it's funny. It's great. I highly rec I highly recommend that as a strategy. All right. But they're all going to eat pancakes too. And, and they're all going to say that they're good. I mean, it's just like the best thing ever. All right. All right. People want blueberries, uh, raspberries. What are we calling for here? Blueberries. Blueberries seem to be the thing. Um, so yeah, so Sun Devil Giving Day, uh, so givingday.asu.edu slash Watts College. Um, obviously, uh, we appreciate your contribution for this. Uh, for this, we appreciate your contribution for all of the for all of the great things that are going on in Watts College. And I really can't um, I really can't communicate effectively enough how inspired I am by what the college does. You know, I started off, I started off by talking about COVID. So let me finish just by sharing a little bit about the work that's been done in response, uh, in response to COVID just in Watts College. Now, a lot of people might know who are watching this that ASU's response on COVID has been nothing short of uh, incredible from my point of view. Our Biodesign Institute has been at the forefront creating, uh, creating tests to, to do a better job than one of some of the leading technology out there at diagnosing people who have COVID. We've, we've not just created the test, but we've implemented that test uh, with incredible efficacy uh, in the community. Uh, our, our, uh, our team has taken on a large measure of responsibility for implementing the vaccination and in fact, our own Brianna Carpenter and one of our grads, who's also at ASU, Marcus Jones, have been totally at the center of those efforts to create an incredible, uh, an incredible vaccination effort that's well regarded, uh, not just locally but even nationally. Um, our CERC, the South uh, Southwest Interdisciplinary Research Center, uh, got a significant multi-million dollar investment from NIH to take our testing technology and bring bring it into underserved communities. Uh, Flavio Marsilia and his uh, GCAR, the Global Center for Applied Health Research, uh, similarly was funded to do testing at the border in the Yuma area so that, uh, so that workers who were crossing back and forth uh, from Mexico to agricultural jobs in the region were getting tests. Uh, uh, in our Maryvale project, we, we used our uh, our connections and trust in the community to create bridges between the testing efforts and the communities that they were trying to reach. Uh, it's really been an incredible, and that's, that's the tip of the iceberg. There's much more than that. Um, it's really been an incredible mobilization of the resources of our college, the expertise, the knowledge. Uh, our, in our School of Social Work, uh, we've had a, a major role, a leading role in creating a contact tracing team uh, which has been instrumental in, in controlling the spread of COVID on the ASU campus, where we have a remarkably low incidence of cases among our staff, students, and faculty. And, and, and Watts College has been part of the effort to contain that. So I could, I could keep going down about the ways in which uh, this college has been responsive. So, so even though the emphasis today is on support for our students, hold on, I want to make sure that I don't lose, uh, lose some pancakes here. Um, that's the emphasis today, but you should be aware as you think about as you think about the possibility of of making an investment in Watts College. Uh, there is there is an incredible high level of return on everything that we do because this college is all about mobilizing to address need in the community and using the talent of our faculty, staff, and students to take on the most vexing challenges we face. And that's exactly that's exactly what we do. And the 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 COVID situation is uh, is obviously terrible, but what it's what it's shown is the incredible nimbleness of the Watts College of the Watts College team to respond to a crisis in the community and uh, and and be of value. And so, for that, uh, I am enormously I am enormously grateful uh, to all of you. Obviously, to Cindy and Mike Watts. Whose name uh, we proudly we proudly bear. Uh, so I want to I want to express uh, I want to express an, uh, a thank you 
as we as we conclude, uh, we we conclude, and I I imagine you're all quite pleased that this is finally over. Uh, we conclude our first uh, our first cooking up uh, cooking up solutions with uh, with Chef Copel. Uh, I can't promise you that there will not be another one of these um, because because this is only one use of the hat. Uh, we haven't even got into the cost of the apron, although the apron's not customized, so that's not quite as uh, not quite as pressing. Uh, but I promise it won't be anytime soon. Uh, so, so you can be you can be assured uh, that you will not be subject to another one of these another one of these exercises, uh, uh, and also that the people who brought this to you and whose idea it was are going to be forced to eat the pancakes as penance. And so, uh, and so, not only will pancakes be served, justice will be served. <laughs> and so, and so, with that, uh, I sign off, uh, and I wish you. Bon